Okay, quick little video on this Tram D201. This is a original hand-wired. Turn the scanner down over here. Okay. Um, this radio was sent in to, for a restoration, but the, main, the the reason it was originally the main reason it was sent in was all of the sudden sudden AM had disappeared on this radio. Uh, it's a fairly common problem. Want to go over? What the problem is, it's a common problem, what the actual cause is, and then some of the reasons why you might want to think about uh, if you have somebody else do it or if you feel ambitious and you want to do it yourself, um, you want to do a restoration, just some quick suggestions. So, put the light on here. And the initial problem, like I say, had uh, AM disappeared. Radio was working fine and then it stopped. Uh, the cause of the problem... It's not what the actual problem is, but the cause of the problem is this 4, 47,000 ohm resistor. Um, it's a 3 watt resistor just like this one. They're 3 watt for a reason, just like all the other resistors in here. You know, your standard resistor in these radios is going to be a quarter watt. If it's larger than that, you know, 1 watt, 2 watt, 3 watt, or in the size of the sand blocks, you know, uh, 7 watt, 10 watts, and even up to 15 watt, they're larger for a reason. They dissipate heat. That's what a resistor does based in layman's terms. It turns electricity into heat. Um, it's basically just a heating element. But it's a, you know, done in a controlled rate. But when this radio is in the correct orientation, when it's right side up, this resistor is on the bottom, of course, heat rises. Well, what's right above it? A bunch of small quarter watt resistors. And you can see, and this is what actually happened was this resistor here is basically in the center turned to ash and it's broken in half. There's another one here's burned up and not far from dying. It's actually had been replaced one time before. You can see you can see that or not. Somebody had actually cut the lead and then tack soldered it back together. And then there's another burned up resistor right here. Um, this resistor, the one that actually caused the problem that burned up and is broken in half, goes to pin 3 of V401. That's this tube right here. Um, and that is the second IF amplifier, IF for intermediate frequency, for the AM circuit. So when that resistor burned up, basically that tube shut down. So that's why AM disappeared. Uh, now, like I say, the problem is it's all the heat as it rises. These resistors are fine at quarter watt. They were the proper size. They could dissipate that much heat. The problem is, it's they get heat soaked when all the heat coming off of this monster three watt one here rises. They heat soak, and they just can't dissipate enough heat, and they eventually end up turning to charcoal, you know, to dust. They burn up eventually, and it's a common problem. You see it, even radios that still work. You pop your bottom cover. Odds are you're going to look down in here, and probably two to three, if not four, of these resistors are going to look like this one. They're going to look black. You won't even be able to make out what the color bands are anymore. So that's just something to, you know, keep in mind. If you lose AM and it's not one of the, the tubes, that's something you can check. Um, like I say, this one's actually getting restored, so it's going to have all of the electrolytic capacitors. You know, these, there's smaller ones down here, all the ones in the back. Uh, the can caps will all be replaced. Now, something I do that not a lot of other people do um, is I also change all of the high wattage carbon composition resistors. High wattage meaning anything that's a 1 watt or a 2 watt. So all of these 1 watt resistors and all of the 2 watts, which there are a lot of them, there's a bunch of them back here, all in through here, and you can see these have gotten hot over the years also. See how they're kind of bubbly? That's the glyptals cooked out of them. They'll start to change color. But they're carbon composition. They're not the most reliable thing in the world like modern metal film resistors are, so they change value over time. And actually, kind of like the same reason you're changing the electrolytic capacitors. They go bad as well. As the oil dries out inside and the aluminum foil starts to oxidize, it'll start to pierce through that, that really thin piece of paper that separates the two plates, and it'll start to short out through the oxidation, and... Eventually, these will just pop. You'll, you'll see ends, if they get bad enough to where they're a dead short, the ends of the capacitors will blow out. But normally, you just keep getting degraded performance. Same thing with resistors. As you know, resistors start to change value, they go out of tolerance, the radio may still work, but your performance goes down. Transmit, receive, you know, selectivity, whatever circuit that component happens to be in, but your performance drastically starts to stop. So, it's a 
owner's choice. What do you want to do? You can change in this, in the case of this radio, change three resistors. The radio probably worked just fine. But you send the radio back and you don't know. A week from now, a month from now, two months from now, it's not going to be too long because there's other parts in here obviously have gotten hot. Other parts that had already been changed before and have failed a second time, um, you know, it's here. You know, if you can, like I say, you can do it yourself, that's great. But it's one of those things you're already in the radio. Just go ahead and do it. The radio will be, you know, good to go for probably another 30 years of use. Uh, other parts can fail, but the, you know, 90, probably in my opinion, probably like on the Tram D201s, 90 plus percent of your problems, other than maybe a vacuum tube going bad, are going to be either resistors or capacitors. If you change all those, you've greatly decreased the likelihood of you having a problem with your radio. So you can go for years and decades without any, any problems other than maybe the occasional tube change. Um, now, one thing that I do, I've actually, before I got too far into the restoration in this, I wanted to show the initial fault. I've actually started the, the restoration, changing the electrolytic capacitors and some of the resistors. It already has new CAN capacitors installed, um, added a terminal tie strip here, Here's some other new electrolytic capacitors, and here's a good example. Uh, what I do is, in these radios, because like I say, these parts generate a lot of heat. Um, so any of the 1 watt resistors are going to be upgraded to 2 watt. Any of the 2 watt resistors, I upgrade to 3 watt. And then these two 3 watt resistors, I will upgrade to 5 watt. But like I say, these are a good example. This is an original 2 watt. And then here is a 3 watt modern metal film flame proof resistor that I've already replaced. Um, it's larger. One of the big advantages is it being larger, it has more surface area, it can dissipate that heat. So its surface never gets as hot. It can be the same, let's say it's the same, actually in this case it is the same value as this one. It's a 27,000 ohm resistor. Red, violet, orange. So actually these, these two resistors are the same value. They do the same job. They're going to drop the same amount. You know, if they had the same voltage going into them, they'll dissipate the exact same amount of heat. But the surface temperature of this resistor is going to be higher than this one because this is physically smaller in size. So the temperature is hotter. And that's where you end up with problems like happened down here. Being a larger resistor, the surface temperature is going to be a little bit cooler. So you have less likelihood of it of, for starters, of that component itself burning up, but especially of it burning up other, you know, other surrounding components like this resistor here, let's say, because it doesn't get as hot. It has more surface area. Another thing to keep in mind when you do, like if you change these, I suggest, especially on these two, make the leads a little bit longer and raise them up so you get a little bit better air circulation around them so they don't cook the surrounding components. Um, and then probably the last thing I would suggest is um, you don't have to. It's just the way I do it. I try to do keep it a little bit more original. Um, I'm going to actually completely desolder the parts that I change. So that's my phone ringing in the background there. Um, like this wire around, this one's actually been changed. It's a workman. You can see somebody did a very sloppy job. They cut the lead off of the original one. They didn't even make a little hook, you know, two hooks and then crimp them together and solder it. They literally cut it off, just held the lead beside the original lead, and then soldered it. If this resistor, and this is a high wattage resistor, so it gets hot, and if anything would ever happen to cause it to short out and really draw a lot of power through it, it gets hot enough to where that solder would melt. Well, now you've got a component flopping around in here, you know, potential of high voltage. You should always do it, I do the, to do it, what I consider proper would be to completely unsolder it, remove the component and the entire lead that goes with it, and then reinstall it just like the factory did. Looped around, just like here, you know, all these parts go through a terminal strip, they're looped around, crimped on, and then soldered. Um, that way it just reduces the likelihood of potential problems in the future. Uh, desoldering, I use a PACE, you know, desoldering machine with a uh, you know, vacuum controlled little hole in the tip there has a glass collection chamber inside. But uh, like I say, just take your time and uh, use good 
good quality components. Don't use the cheapest thing you can find because you'll get cheap results. And you'll have a radio be good to go for another 30 plus years.